Hello everyone, this is Katie Colleen here. Welcome back Colleen Clan, or if you are new, then come join the family for day one of Mid Valley Comic Art Expo in Salem, Oregon. And, oh, thank you, I am a cosplay guest. It's my first time guesting at an in-person convention. Also, check out the fit. I'm wearing Supergirl after like a year of no Supergirl. The Supergirl drought has ended. Here she is, everybody. So we got a busy day today. I'm running a panel today. It's called Cosplay as a Side Hustle, and it's how you can make just a little bit of money from cosplay while still enjoying the hobby. And then this evening, I'm judging the cosplay contest. So there's a lot going on, and I suspect I will be doing some commentary at home to fill in this vlog because guesting opportunity stuff has to come first. Ah, let's go check out the con, guys! As I kind of predicted, I was a bit too busy guesting to really focus on vlogging. So you get some video of me back in the craft room giving some commentary. So, how did the panel go? I ran cosplay as a side hustle on Saturday, and I think people were expecting me to run like a cosplay and disability panel, or even a cosplay 101 panel. And look, I'm always gonna be making cosplay and disability content because I run a cosplay channel and my disability does kind of impact like every aspect of my life. So that content's always gonna be there. I just feel like lately I have just like, talked and talked and talked and talked about cosplay and disability. So I wanted to switch it up. And I also feel like I just have nothing unique to add to a cosplay 101 panel that has not been said before. So I decided to run social media panels all weekend. That panel is already up on YouTube if you wanna watch it. I felt like it went pretty well. This is actually my first time running a solo panel. So I was really nervous. There's a huge sweat stain on the back of my wheelchair seat. Um, I probably have pit stains too. Like I'm so sweaty, which I'm sure you all wanted to know. So we're gonna take a little break. I'm gonna change out of Supergirl. We're gonna get some lunch and we're gonna come back to the con later. So my biggest concern guesting at this con with my disability was the Saturday schedule. So I was running the very first panel of the convention on the main stage. And I was also judging the cosplay contest, which is the very last event on Saturdays. So I was fully into my Supergirl cosplay by 10 a.m. And I don't think I really got back from the cosplay contest until like 8 p.m. So that's like 10 hours in full costume. And I just can't do that, okay? So after the panel, I decided to completely change out of cosplay and just take a break for three hours. <laughs> so at this con, cosplay contest signups are in person at the event on Saturday. This is where I like hatched my plan to come to the con closer to the cosplay contest and just find anyone in cosplay and be like, oh my gosh, have you thought about entering the contest? And basically try and like advertise the contest and get people excited about it. And it turns out the con was actually much less busy at four o'clock than it had been at noon. So basically I had like two hours of time between when I arrived at four and the contest started at six to just like exist at the con. And I did the sticker rally. Ta-da! So basically it's a game you can play where each booth you visit will give you a sticker. And once you get them all filled out, you get a goodie bag. I think I'm just gonna do a little con haul right here <laughs> to show you guys what I got. So here's the sticker card. Each booth would give you a little star. And on the back, they had a map to find the booths. And here are all the artists that were participating. There's gonna be something from each of these artists in uh, our little goodie bag, if you wanna check any of them out. So all this was from the sticker rally, which took less than an hour. It took less than an hour to see all the different booths. And I actually did end up going back on Sunday and buying more stuff from these artists just because I was like, you gave me so much. Um, so I got some stickers. I got a keychain. So those were all purchased from those artists. I'm so excited to stick these stickers on everything. I've been in like a weird sticker mood lately. And then other things I bought is I got a graphic novel. <laughs> I got Zombie Cage Fighter. It has been literally years since I have bought a book at a convention, but this guy just, I don't know, he had a really good sales pitch. And even though I am certainly in my fairy children girly cartoon phase, 
this was actually a pretty good read. That's my haul! Look how much stuff I got at this con! And like I said, that only took like an hour, so we had a whole nother hour to spend at the con before the contest, and we spent that at the coloring table. They had a little coloring table where you could color printouts of the con mascot, and dude, it was just so funny to see how many of these got colored. Like, this was very, very popular. By the end of Saturday, like every squirrel had been colored and my husband colored a squirrel for me also. And then it was finally contest time. So I wanna talk a bit about the Coslet contest. This con is only in their second year. So it's a much smaller con. I was thinking like maybe we get like 12 people or something. Like I thought it'd be a really small turnout, but a lot of people showed up. First, how is this contest set up? So there are only two categories at this contest, which for a con in their second year, I think is reasonable. So there's only under 13 and over 13, that's it. No masters, no novice, no whatever. We had eight people in the kids contest. So there were eight contestants under 13. We had 21 in the open contest. So that's, I think a bigger turnout than Really, I was expecting, and I don't think anyone else was expecting that big a turnout. So we had 21 contestants at the contest. This is my very first time judging a cosplay contest. And the way the contest was run was, it, it's very similar to Lilac City Comic Con and how they run their contest, if you've ever been there. So basically each contestant would come on stage and the MC would say, hey, how'd you make your costume? Anything you wanna tell us? And that would be the contestants chance to explain how they made the costume or if they wanted to do like a performance thing or if they wanted to whatever basically each contestant got some time with a microphone and then the contestant had time to talk to the judges so it was myself and there were two other judges and all of us had craftsmanship experience uh, so we had a judge from the dragon ball z group that was there we had a judge from the 501st legion both of them have a wealth of cosplay experience and it made me feel so much better judging knowing that I had their opinions. And the only kind of critique I've heard from it is that like when the judges were talking and asking questions, you couldn't hear it in the audience. We didn't have microphones or anything. And I do think we went kind of long. You know, you want to take in as much as the costume as possible. And as someone who's been a contestant many, many times, sometimes when you're given the mic, it just kind of comes out as I made this, which is something you can't really judge on. So by the time the contestant got to the judges, we could actually ask them like, okay, but did, did you make it out of foam? Did you make it out of leather? Uh, what was the techniques you used? So I really found it super helpful as a judge to have a whole lot of time with each contestant the audience is just sitting there like not hearing what we're saying not being entertained basically dude there was some hard competition for such a small contest some really hard competition some people brought really really amazing builds you wish you could give awards to every contestant you really do and it was really hard to pick <laughs> my only other critique would be i'd love to see a experience and a novice category maybe next year because while the under 13, over 13 categories work really well when you only have like a handful of contestants, at the point that they're having 21 entrants in the over 13 category, I think that could, uh, you know, signal that maybe it's enough to separate it into experienced and novice. Just because I saw a lot of novice cosplayers who did incredible work for being a novice. It was only their first or second costume and they did great. And I would have loved to give them an award for doing a really great job as a novice. But at these contests where the category is just over 13, the masters level contestants are going to walk away with the prizes. So that's just kind of how it is. So that's how the contest went. Overall, I think it went really, really well. Hello, welcome to day two of Mid Valley Comic Art Expo. I am finally debuting Sequin Flora at a con. So that's exciting. So plans for today, I do have a panel at one o'clock and that's how to be a YouTuber. So I'm gonna do that. Um, I'd also like to get some cool B-roll. We just did a photo shoot here. Uh, this is 
like a kind of like forestry wildlife park thing. Yeah, it looks nice. So I felt like this was perfect for Miss Flora and we're gonna actually go to the convention now. I didn't have a whole lot planned on Sunday. So I think this is the perfect part of the vlog to talk about the venue. So the venue was the Oregon State Fairgrounds. And I think the only other fairgrounds con I've been to is Lake City at the like Coeur d'Alene area fairgrounds. So the way this was set up is actually pretty similar to that. It's just one really, really big room. So there were no separate panel rooms. I mean, there was obviously a lot of outdoor space and it was lovely weather all weekend, but there weren't separate rooms inside the convention. Just one giant room. As far as accessibility goes, this con was really great. I did consulting with them months prior to the event. You know, we talked about getting a ramp for the stage. They had a ramp, fantastic. We talked about how far the, you know, vendors should be, how far their table should be so that wheelchair users could get through. And it wasn't a fairgrounds, but they had disabled parking and it was all paved to get from the disabled parking inside the fairgrounds. From a wheelchair user perspective, it was very, very accessible. I was part of planning the accessibility, which was honestly really cool. Um, I would love to do more of that with cons and just have cons consult actual disabled people about accessibility. <laughs> I mean, obviously it'd also be great to like hire like an ADA expert, but not every con's gonna have money for that. And I feel like the next best thing is asking an actual disabled person what accommodations they need, you know? So it was really cool, like helping plan out the accessibility with them for this con and having it be very accessible for me. Oh, that's it for Mid Valley. Yeah, I had a great time. I was super, super nervous going into this weekend. Um, I was just like, I don't know why I was so worried. Like I, I certainly have the qualifications to run panels and guests, but um, I think just having the label as a guest was kind of like, oh, it's real now. It's real. I'm a guest. Um, and I got kind of nervous, but as the weekend went on, I got like way more comfortable. Overall, I'm just like really grateful for this opportunity. And I think it went really well and everyone kind of came away happy. So I'm just, I think this was a really, really good con for my first guesting experience. And I'm just really grateful I got to do this, uh, which is good news because I'm guesting as a judge at Kronaku Con next month. So I'm glad it went well here. I think this was a very good first con. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next video. Bye.